Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to bring to the virtual stage the cast from October Faction. Ladies and gents, please, please, please welcome back to this virtual stage, Miss Tamara Taylor. Hello. Hello. JC McKenzie. Yay! Hey. Aurora Burkhart. Hello. Oh, hi. Hey. And the crowd goes wild. Absolutely, absolutely. Gabriel Darku. Hey. And last but certainly not least, the baddest mama of them all, Max yeah. and Roy. <laughs> hello. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Guys, how are we doing? How is 2020 treating you guys? Is, are you are you finding some respite <laughs> at all? I'm telling you. How much time, Victor? <laughs> Listen, I'm I'm so messed up. I was I was literally trying to figure out like when did October Faction actually come out? Was it two, three years ago? And it was like no, 20, 2020 or 2019. I'm like, that was like two, three years ago. Yeah, yeah. That's how 2020 has been. So I totally understand. <laughs> are you guys staying yeah. busy, uh, reading co cool things? I'm doing um, nothing. <laughs> yep. It's like I am nothing. surviving. <laughs> I love that it. There's, it. there's at, for the first time in my life, there's no pressure to get a job. So it's great. That, that's kind of nice. <laughs> that's kind of nice. Silver lining. It's a nice way yeah, to look at it. Yeah. That is kind of nice. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Listen, we got folks tuning in from all over the world. Check this out. We've got North Carolina, Los Angeles, New Jersey, Cali as a whole, uh, UK, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Florida. Moscow, Russia. Okay, this is this is getting serious. Uh, Massachusetts, Washington State, Austria. Okay, so we got people literally all over the world uh, wanting to tune in. Uh, we actually got some messages. Andrea Lamb says uh, that she's so excited, and after the Bones panel, can't wait to see you again, Tamara. So you oh, got you got yeah, crossover yeah. fans here. Oh, that's very cool. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so I'm a comic book fan. This was October Factions based off a comic book series. Who read it before you were cast? Did you did you guys know that? Tamira did okay. I, hmm. Come I, on, yeah, let's let no, it out. Let the geek I'm out. Lying. I'm lying, guys. <laughs> I totally did not read it before. I, I read the synopsis and then got the comic books. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Um, so I'm, I'm once I got the comic boat. books, I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I I inquired about reading it and asked to read it, but was told by the director of the pilot. X that I shouldn't. Okay. Are you so, serious? Yeah, yeah. He said don't. Not to? Yeah, he, he said don't read it because it's going to be completely different. So they always say that every time something's mm. based on a book or not or graphic novel or whatever, they always say don't, don't, just, just do your own thing. And yeah, I mean, it does allow you to bring an original take, and I think you guys did a great job of that. Um, are you are you comic book readers at all? Yes. Jesus. I used to read a lot of Archie comics. I mean, that counts. Archie that definitely comics counts. rock. Don't sleep yes. on Archie. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Classic. They're the best. Classic. That's childhood nostalgia right there. Oh, yeah. Listen, before 2020 is over, I need y'all to pick up some comics because we ain't got nothing else to do. So let's just read some stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> what drew you to your roles, though? Like, what, what was it that really kind of made you want to be a part of this? Was it the snappy dialogue, the monsters you faced off, or maybe the powers that you wielded? Uh, Maxim, if you want to start that off, what, what drew you to it? Well a job um <laughs> no i was i was cast i was cast as somebody else i won't say which character but i was actually cast as another character on the show that, and that then, i really didn't like we won't say who the character is but, I didn't <laughs> like her. but and then something that never happens in our business i got a call i don't know four day no actually it was like three days four days before the first read through Oh. I got a call from my agent saying, well, this never happens, but they're offering you a bigger role. And I was like, what? Which one? And then Damien Kindler called me and described the character and what it was going what was going to happen. And so I, I thought it was amazing. It sounded great. And I I knew of I didn't know any of these beautiful people, but I knew of them. And I was like, yeah, sure. I'm going to do this, of course. I like to have powers. <laughs> exactly. Wouldn't we all? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't we all? Gabriel, what about you? The, uh, the powers, man. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of, of being a supernatural being on screen has always been a bit of a fantasy. It's really cool. Um, but to be honest, the dialogue and the writing was like just for the character of Jeff itself was actually really intriguing to me. I've never 
just a character that I've never gotten to play on screen before. And, and the idea of just doing something new um, and taking on a challenge in that, in that sense um, is always going to be, uh, you know, something that attracts me. And I think it was also just the challenge of the whole job itself. Like I, 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 I remember getting the offer on, on, I think it was just like a Sunday I signed that contract and we were filming that Thursday. Oh, wow. so it was, how it was a turnaround. Wow. Yeah. Keepers. It's like definitely didn't have time to read much of the comics. Like I got the comics uh, like a week or two into, into filming um, and, and did what reading and prep that I could with that. So it, it, I think it was, it was cool because I knew that I was going to be going into this with a much different uh, uh, approach than any other job that I've, that I've taken. And so that really, that really had me intrigued right yeah awesome definitely had a necessity like it's like it's like (laughs) it wasn't like the first big job i ever got reboot we had weeks to prepare we had all 20 episodes uh in binders we were in in the hotel room the whole cast you know doing our work with the director for a week and a half beforehand doing rehearsals and stuff with this it was just sign and go so it was like it was much more of discovering the character and building it with you guys on the day doing yeah. these things and it was yeah. and and that honestly was a really cool experience something i've never i've never you know encountered before that's crazy i have to admit as a fan i never would have guessed that that was the case because you guys seem yeah. so natural as the as like you have just lived with this role for ages that's fantastic Aurora, what about you what what drew you to it you know what i just i remember reading the script and thinking gosh viv is such a misfit and me too uh, um <laughs> and i'm just being like I, there's something about her not fitting in and also like the kind of mysticism and and feeling like she understood something but couldn't quite articulate it mm-hmm. really clicked um and it was it like uh Gabe it was such a quick sudden turnarounds and it all happened I was like oh my gosh it's going fast but I just felt very strongly that we were kind of her and I were the club of misfits and I don't know somehow that would work Sometimes um, it just clicks, you know. Yeah, yeah I was waiting, wait, wait for the the, the next clicks. <laughs> but, <laughs> she, she we, just, we're gonna make that happen. There yeah. <laughs> yeah, world. But there was something about her that I just felt really resonated with me, um, because I also had been kind of an outsider at school and um, had always felt a bit in between worlds, and so. Yeah, she just kind of made sense to me for some reason. And and uh, like Gabe, I really just liked the way that it was all written and I liked the tone of it all. It just it just all made sense and that's so, so rare and like such a lovely thing to cherish. I mean, just think, I really, I think I get this world and you tap in. Awesome. Yeah. Tamara? Um, wow, I, I would say that I'm... Um, the writing was, well, I sort of got the lookbook initially and um, I, I was completely shocked by how, uh, by the graphic novel, because of course they had pulled some pictures from the graphic novel to give right. us a sense of tone. Um, and that was before I got to read the script. And so I immediately thought, oh God, if the words are as good as this looks, I am so, I am so there. And I, you know, literally, I think it was um, the first, the opening scene. I was like, I'm doing this. I'm doing, I'm clearly going to do this. One of the coolest opening scenes I've ever been. Facts, in. And, all yeah, facts. I, oh my God. And then we went straight, I think into the, was it the car scene? And I loved the family banter. I was like, God, mm-hmm. this is a smart group. Like the, just the dialogue was amazing. The relationships were were cool and not two dimensional, which they really can be in with TV shows. So it like I that all of it got me. That's and brilliant. Yeah, like I, I couldn't decide even who my favorite character was. It just from scripts from episode to episode, I kind of changed. You know, my favorite changed. I think that's very true for all of us. JC, what about you? Uh, well, uh, on a on a on an off topic, I just want to say for all the fans out there that this group that you're looking at are just an amazing group of human beings and, and lovely talented actors and so kind on set. And you rarely get that. There's often a bad apple in amongst the group. I tried to be the third in the punch bowl. I tried to be there. <laughs> <laughs> 
so hard. Everyone was so, so sweet. I just want to say that. Uh, just to start off with, I, I think, uh, uh, like Max, uh, you know, it's a job for me and I, I never get to play a lead guy. I'm always kind of like third guy to the left. So it was, it was an interesting <laughs> departure for me. I got a call from Chick Egley, who was a, an associate of Damien Kindler, who created the show. And he said, listen, I pitched you for the lead in this show that my buddy is doing. And it's, uh, I said, I don't do leads. And he goes, just let me, let me pitch you. And I love I don't do see, leads. And then I, I had a series of like six or seven uh, Zoom meetings with Damien. I, I was put on tape several times for several different scenes. Uh, Damien wanted me, but I heard the, the heads, some of the heads at Netflix didn't think I was famous enough. So I was asked to get a letter from two uh, you know, established people in the industry I did. They submitted it. And then the next day I got the role. So, okay. Can, can I just, can, can you please just for the fans, tell them who the letters were from. Just Martin, just. Martin Scorsese and Aaron Sorkin. That's how you flex. Yeah. That's a flex right there. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Don't ask about my resume ever again. Yeah. Yeah. Watch him out. That's what, I, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Mic drop letter signed. Brilliant. <laughs> Now, Michael. anyway, Tamara, we are going to come back to that turn and punch bowl comment. Don't think that that's just <laughs> it. We're going to come back to that. But uh, <laughs> Andre wants to know, uh, where where did you mostly film? I mean, obviously, the town that we know of was Barrington on Hudson. But where was that? Well, it was Toronto and Hamilton. It was oh, Hamilton. Okay. Yeah. Cam Cambridge, Hamilton, and Toronto. And nice. Cambridge, is, is that where Gilead, is that where Handmaid's Tale was? Is yeah. Yeah, that's in Cambridge. Yeah, yep. that was like a, a trip out to walk past. Uh, we had our romantic scene. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. On the waterfront where the people hang. <laughs> oh, it, boy. Hang in Gilead. It was like, that's yeah. so romantic. Yeah, like, oh. so minus 20 I, degrees and snowing that day. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Actually, yeah. sleeting, sleeting. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, crazy. That's absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Uh, Jeannie Ford wants to know, uh, they love the combination of supernatural and family drama. If you could, though, would you have changed anything about where the season ended? Good question. Mm. I know, right? Like no, starting I, off, you're like everything about it. I kind of did yeah. too. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, the ending had is radically changed from the original ending. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. I I actually think the way they orchestrated what everyone saw was much better than the original. Didn't nice. you? Didn't you guys think? I thought I was so. kind of looking forward to that to that tableau ending. I'm not going to lie. Oh, yeah, exactly. Were you? I was. Yeah. I really, really was. <laughs> I, was really, really I felt was. so uncomfortable doing that. We Wait, all, just for context. What ending is well. this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, sorry for context. The yeah. way that it had, um, we thought it was going to end, or that we'd kind of one of the alternative events we'd make was that we would all, as a family, kind of have a comic book style tableau of us with our various. Um, yeah. powers slash weapon of choice. Wow. Yeah, so that, that, scene, where that, that, that scene where I'm cooking breakfast. Around. Yeah, with, with Sam? Yeah, I was just about to say, yeah, with, I, when I'm cooking breakfast where, where, where um, Philip is helping me, I was cooking breakfast for the fam and it was supposed to end where we're setting the table, we're having breakfast around the table and what? the banging that we hear that the shot ends up ending on is actually us in the kitchen hearing the banging and then we all sort of like look yeah. where it's coming to and then we're all sort of standing Freeze in like friend. a... Nice little well, and we all tableau. grab our weapons. Like you, you, yeah. guys, you guys, hands up. You know, getting ready. Yeah, to eyes glowing. Up. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think I grabbed, okay. a, like, grabbed a gun out of a cookie jar. What did you? You <laughs> grabbed a knife, and we were like, Oh my up. god! I, yeah. Okay, Netflix. I need a director's cut or something <laughs> where we can get this. Come on, don't don't just. Huh. Oh my the God. only thing that was awkward about uh, about the whole tab logo was like, you know, we we had rehearsed it a couple of times. I know that we felt this, guys, when <laughs> when we grab our stuff, that felt pretty badass. But then you kind of freeze frame. <laughs> yeah, it felt it like, like so smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, now, now hold so that anger both you and max a lot of that freeze frame stuff max you had a lot of freeze frame stuff you had to constantly do. yeah we yeah. were so yeah. good at it Jeez, yeah no. those looked it's, great it's editing tamara it's just <laughs> editing i i was there when i was there for the uh for the the forest crazy fight scene yeah. no no i i witnessed it up close and personal insanely talented 
Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, and there was some amazing action. Did you guys do your own stunts and, and all that stuff? Oh. Max did. <laughs> I did not. I did not. <laughs> no, I had my stunts. Max is just a badass. <laughs> That's, I mean, I, well, or you, you had some tussles, you know, a couple of Oh, yeah, okay, I did that. That's you know, that. yeah, yeah. He's like, no, I was doing that. That was all me. Yeah, yeah. See that swing. I didn't count that. That was so easy. <laughs> it wasn't. I was like, <laughs> help me. I love it. Uh, Aurora Gabriel, to a non speaker, your Japanese seemed flawless. Were you fluent or did you have to learn this for the part? Oh, we learned it for the part. Oh, we learned it for the part. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> Another unbelievable moment. You that is insane. Just like, seriously, this, this is three pages of dialogue in Japanese. You seriously learned it, and you're like, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, they did a good job with with breaking it down for us, though. To be fair, yeah. Like the the sheets that they gave us had, like each line that we had to say had it broken down in like four different ways. The Japanese wording with Japanese writing, right. and then. Japanese wording with with English alphabet and then phonetic alphabet and then just like regular English words, but like sounding it out, I guess. Yeah, wow. phonetically. Yeah, it's like this. So they yeah. broke it out in a way that we could like really understand it and like not just be reciting words, but actually be able to like act what we're saying, you yes. know? Yeah, I, um, I wondered that uh, if you're t if you're doing it technically or are you absorbing what you're you, you know exactly what you're saying or is yeah, it a combination like they, of both? They allowed us to they allowed us to to know what we're saying when we're saying it so that you know we could actually so you get it feel That's the scene really yeah but you know i'm such a language buff though so like i wanted i, I wish you had, had more time because then i would have like attempted sure. to go off and then of course um, the more time more time would always been better yeah yeah so it was kind of and actually just uh, it's it's so interesting because i've become like weirdly fascinated with various languages recently and i've been listening to what stephanie's being like i really should try but it's it's so difficult i mean yeah. yeah it was actually great just being able to play characters who are intelligent enough to be that multilingual that, um, yeah that's awesome for an international cast who speaks the most languages amongst you guys i speak one language Really? <laughs> That's Everyone's got, like, uh, I got one. Uh, okay, I used to all speak right. French. I speak two and a half. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Two and a half. Yeah. Max? I, was... I speak one and like four halves. So in total, like two and a half. <laughs> which I think counts. That's amazing. That's I think it, it totally counts. It totally counts. <laughs> yeah. um, I want to make sure I'm saying this name. Uliana uh, from Russia says uh, to Tamara Maxim, you inspire me to draw so much. Um, I think that's a very interesting thing. Um, Aurora, I know you drew a lot in the show. Do you, do you have artistry skills? Was that, was that your hand making those, those beautiful pictures? That was not my hand. <laughs> um, I do like to make art, but it's a lot more abstract in okay. line with my talent for art. <laughs> um, <laughs> And that's what I have to say on the subject. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. I think that's totally fair, of course. Um, Lady Bancroft says, first of all, I'd like to say uh, absolutely love the show. Uh, what was the most fun thing to ever happen behind the scenes? Uh, that's back to that turn the punch bowl thing. Um, and was there anything you would have liked to explore more in terms of the plot? Oh my I think, you know, even though the location was really not the most pleasant one, the, the, the basement scenes that we had um, in that haunted building. Oh, yeah. It was that so was freezing. So it was dusty and it was so haunted. Cold. It was awful. Yeah. yeah. When we were all there, when I explained that whole episode where, you know, we go back and we see who Alice is and everything. So it was the five of us, which was so much fun. Yeah. And we laughed a we lot. Together. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, oh, my God. I think that was the first awesome. time it was all five of us together filming yeah. at the same I think, time. I think yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And no, that I, was, I, yeah, I, a lot I, of shenanigans. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I think it was one of the first times that I'd worked with you, Max. And I, yes. I, I look over and see Max going, oh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Checking her breath. Oh, I, oh. I no, like, no, war warming her hand. Warming her oh. hand. You That's can, you can actually yeah. tell her. Story. She was warming her yeah. hand. We this had one has no was really hard concentration to for lunch. It was really it was there was a lot of garlic for lunch <laughs> and it was hard to digest. And then when you're shooting, you're about to shoot. Well, and you, you were right. Yeah. OK, you have to burn. Oh, no, that was it. You burnt. That was it. You, I burped. You, you did a side burp. You did but I turned around. <laughs> I burped sideways and, and then did this. this. <laughs> 
See, that's classy. <laughs> that's manners. Like, yeah. You. That's what that is. You're polite enough to turn around. Did you just burp? <laughs> <laughs> We just la- started laughing, and that's when we became friends. That, that was the start of <laughs> a beautiful it. friendship. Boom, boom. Oh my God. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> now, this show puts a, a heavy importance on family and the beautiful dynamics they're in. There's a lot of twists and turns, and there's a lot of things that was changed from the, the source material, but you guys kind of really created like the new definition of the modern family. Uh, were you aware of that when you were putting the, the show together? I no? think I, I I mean once we saw who was ca- who was cast, mm-hmm. um, it was really clear. And it's funny because initially um, Alice was not um, was going to be uh, at least in the lookbook was East Indian. Oh wow! So, yeah, and but I think what ended up happening was that we realized like if we're going to do this flip flop where mm-hmm. the big reveal, not spoil spoiler alert. Yeah, better have watched this already. Yeah, <laughs> if we're going to do the big reveal with the kids, it's going to have to be plausible, which means mm-hmm. that you know the the actual parents are going to have to be, uh, and it, I think it was very purposeful. Damien made the mirror images of JC and I. Right. And that's so I think it was very purposeful and felt really progressive. I like Mm -hmm. looking back on it. I was like, yay, everything about this is amazing. And I love that it's not discussed. It's not self-conscious. Right. Mm -hmm. Not self-conscious. Yeah. It doesn't reference at all. It just treats it as as normal and as as well as should be. But I mean, we're literally dealing with, you know, all kinds of things of, of sense of self, homosexuality, surrogacy. And you yeah. guys handled it so, so very well. Um, was that one of the things that, that you like really loved about playing in uh, your different roles? Yeah. I think just absolutely. the showing, you're going gay because you've got so much more to say on this than I do. Uh, no, I was just gonna say, yeah, like yeah, I think any chance to, to you know, have a hand in, in telling a story that is, that is going to, you know, shed light and show representation for people that, that need it is, is an opportunity that should always be taken up, you know? So yeah, as soon as, as soon as you read something like this, you, it's like, oh, this is, this is important. This is something that, that really needs to be told, you know? Yeah. Of course, of course. Especially now, I think one of the things that for me was so amazing and so timely, incredibly timely, especially for now, was the fear of the other that they tackled with. And it just was so, you know, the monsters are just a metaphor and, and it was so modern. It was such a modern mm-hmm. way of, of um, and I was really surprised at how people, especially women reacted to our relation, my reaction, uh, my relationship with Tamara's character with Dolores mm-hmm. um, in the end, it was really moving the way mothers um, reacted and were so um, felt compelled and, and, um, yeah, it was, I was very surprised at that. It was really an anthem for co-parenting, which is you know, yeah. such a beautiful thing <laughs> to enough. really kind of see. Um, Aurora, Viv's character has, um, we'll say some social anxieties. Was that something difficult yeah. to really kind of play up? I mean, you seem very extroverted, but uh, on the show, obviously Viv was very you know reserved. Was that hard to do? Uh, honestly, my extroversion is a mask for huge social anxiety, so no. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> uh, no, it was, I think, you know, it's really important, I think. Uh, I, I think one of the most amazing things about the show is is the compassion, like, that you can have for all of the different characters. So many different people going through quite extraordinary things. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't know, it just felt very important to be true to her being, feeling awkward and feeling like she didn't fit in and feeling um, incredibly anxious. And, you know, it wasn't, ever really about her being um a kind of she has to be relatable on a on a, on a real level of course. and um and it wasn't comfortable you know i think it's uncomfortable to play someone who a is that's like like i said really close to home for a lot of my high school life and also uncomfortable because when someone is outcast socially that is an uncomfortable place to be but it's also a place that a lot of people live in and um it, it was wonderful to be able to bring characters to life who kind of, you know, one of the reasons I became um, 
an actor was so that people would watch stuff and be like, oh, okay, that I'm like that too. So, of course, you know, like, my experience is, is in some way like universal, or someone else goes through it. So, to be able to have, um, and my only like real wish for her was that we, we, we see, we see more about how that unfolds. I don't necessarily think it should be resolved because a lot of the time that remains unresolved, but it, you know, it's, it's an interesting journey to be on. Of course, of course. JC, you are literally like my dad goals in life now, um, to be funny, witty, and able to kill monsters on a whim. Um, was that, you know, something that you were excited to be a part of the pantheon of TV dads? Uh, yeah. I mean, I never thought of it as a pantheon of TV dads, but, uh, uh, like, like Aurora, I approach everything with a great deal of fear. Uh, <laughs> so, so doing doing a kind of a big role like this uh, was uh, was interesting. What I appreciated, and I think Damien facilitated this as the creator of the show, and you know the showrunner, was uh, the degree of looseness with which the actors were allowed to play on set. Yeah. You know, Tamar and I had a great deal of freedom to just not improvise, but just to really shade it with our own, you know, our own qualities, if you will. So, um, and, you know, I've, I, I heard a lot of feedback on, and I should, shouldn't have watched Twitter, but, uh, you know, it's like, I can't believe this dude, this nerd is the, the spy or the lead. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, he's he's ugly. He's what? So me, that's so not. Cool. No, that's, it, yeah. It, yeah. Listen, I, it's not no, true. I'm not, listen, I'm not fishing stuff, for compliments. Man. I'm fine with that. I've spent my whole life like that. But it, it was just like, I think that's the point. It's that this nerd was put. Well, for both of us. Yeah, but you're beautiful. I mean, also true. Also oh, true. It's, well, but, I'm but, not pushing you to, but I think I think that was the point is that we weren't the obvious. Yeah, we weren't the obvious, which is which is a huge risk on on a on a showrunner's uh, to you know to tip to to because I saw the guys, some of the guys I I know that were auditioning for this, I all had huge jaw lines and you know you know five o'clock shadows and a lot of muscle. muscles rippling, rippling. Yeah, yeah, that, that was all wrong. that's not reality it's way more realistic yeah. somebody a yeah. spy you never know who a spy is you have to it looks like the neighbor it looks like you know exactly somebody. and so the james bonds and the mission impossibles this that's that's fictional that's not real this this relationship that you guys had was way more realistic and especially in the car in the first that. episode come on like yeah. i believe you guys have been married forever like yeah, if you tell me so now funny. that you're married i'm like yeah of course of course Listen, thank god for this woman she is oh, so delightful to work with i mean I, i'm telling you she's 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 just perfect just perfect and she doesn't burp <laughs> no, not like you you're not perfect i'm not <laughs> I'm not. No, no, no. Burping is a warlock skill. That's a, exactly. it's a, it's a magic thing. It. You got to, you know, yeah, that's what that is. Uh, Darren Brady wants to know, um, okay, so watching it now, it's especially, you know, poignant, it is October. So October Faction is kind of like a necessity. Uh, do you think that we're going to see more views on, on Netflix because of, you know, people being shut in? It is kind of a spooky piece. Um, are you expecting some, some upticks? I totally think I would so. think so, yeah. I totally am. I, I think, <laughs> like, not only should that absolutely happen, it must happen, because, unfortunately, I know that, you know, earlier this year, there was the, the reported cancellation. I do believe that if we use our Twitter fingers, we might be able to rally up enough to, you know, get that to change. Um, so my question is, obviously, where things, you know, kind of left off, there's that big bumping under underground. What do you guys think that is? What would be your guess if you could say, oh, it's this type of creature, what would you say? I don't know. I, I, I don't really, know. had you guys thought about I it? I haven't thought about that. Mm. I was like, like uh, the furthest that I've- What would Samuel keep in the basement? That's it, the furthest oh. that I've got, it's, it's some kind of experiment for Samuel. Is it like, I'm thinking that it's, if anything, it would be like a new, 
it's like a hybrid. Like he's mixing genes. In, that's, in yeah, that's not okay. Got a he full on mad going on. Yeah, I love it, and that's not okay. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no. Because no. you, I mean, seriously, this show really showcases some of these classic monsters in the scariest possible ways. What was some of your favorite monsters that you encountered? I like the way they did the vampires. Yes, with the I love really, really, really cool. Really cool. Really cool. When yeah. we were when we were shooting the opening scene, there was a very tiny man about five, <laughs> five six in a rubber suit who looks like a Teletubby. And I said, yeah. "Who's that? Who's that?" She goes, "That's the monster." I went, "That's the monster." <laughs> That's the monster. Well, and uh, by the way, the monsters also couldn't see through oh, the yeah. masks that they were wearing. Or here. <laughs> or here. Wow. So they were basically, it had to be like amazingly claustrophobic in there. And I had to like blind shoot this guy. <laughs> but he had to he had to figure out without being told when to get up. Yeah. Because yeah, like it was, it was so crazy. And the, those ones, I thought they looked scary though. I think Max was the scariest monster. I yeah. agree. I, I was just agree. about to say that. I, I mean. <laughs> Alice had some crazy great, uh, like as as Alice. What was your favorite kill that you did in the movie or the show? Oh my, my, my favorite kill. Yes, because I mean you kind of you kind of murdered people in some really colorful ways. It's so funny because a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of my friends watch the show and they're like, "You scared me out of me," and I'm like, "Really? That's what I'm, I'm supposed that scary? to do." I didn't realize. I don't know. I just liked. I liked. Um, it was very odd because, you know, coming on board the first day I had to kill people. Um, Damien was like, so uh, what, how do you want to do this? I'm like, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> like, how does a warlock do this? He was like, well, just do something with your hand. And I was like, well, how about I do something that's really small? Like, you don't, you have no friggin' clue what she's going to do. And and that's how I came up with the, just the slow, the slow Which torture. Is totally it's terrifying. Slow and it's totally terrifying. Listen, yeah. I use it on my children today. So it's very effective. <laughs> absolutely. Amazing. They know when I put the hand up and I, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> it's absolutely genius. Um, Ingrid says, I vote yes for season two. Need to see more of the nerd dad. I agree 100%. That's that's a definite. Um, 100%. Uh, Max, what was it like when they did the the backstory for for Alice and you really see the the almost despicable nature that Presidio kind of gets into? What was it like to be able to delve into that side of the character to kind of change the perspective uh, from the monster? Oh, I was so happy when I read that episode. I was very lucky that they wrote that um, because I liked Alice because I always feel that you know, every every bad guy in every in in real life, you know that it's something that happened in the past. It's a childhood trauma. It nobody wakes up one day being just really mean. Something happened. And I was like, something happened. What happened to Alice for her to feel this way? And just and I I, I was so happy that we got to film that whole episode and backstory because she was and she was just a hippie mom. She was just like the hippiest of hippies. It <laughs> It was so it was awful what happened to her. Yeah. 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 Wow. Um, I want to make sure I'm saying this right. Agus Avila uh, or Avila uh, says, I love you, Maxim. Kisses from Argentina. That's the start. Um, I'm writing about your character in my literature class right now. Uh, what do you think is the most important theme of the show? The acceptance of, of the other, of the, of the strange, of this, of what, of things we don't know, of people we don't understand and, and cultures we don't understand. I think that's the whole, that's what the show is about nice. is ignorance nice. is, is look at the world now. I mean, <laughs> yeah. very true. Very yeah. true. Did you Pretty all pull much. something similar or did you have something unique that you each got from the show? JC, we'll start with you. No, uh, like Max, I thought it was an exploration of, uh, you know, it's like a meta, the monsters are a metaphor for, for everything that's going on in society, dealing with all elements of homophobia, xenophobia, um, you know, Racism. and, uh, and done in a very mm -hmm. clever way with a sci-fi kind of lens with which, uh, you know, we see this world. So I thought, uh, so I thought it was, uh, a piece, uh, with a message, uh, and well, well, well being entertaining, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, what are you guys currently working on or what possibly is on the horizon uh, coming up once we are clear of all this 2020 COVID business 
Do you guys have anything lined up just yet? I know you don't have to. I know that was one of the things you were saying, JC, mm-hmm. but do you have anything that you can talk about? Can't Nobody talk can talk about, about it. it. Okay, I can't, all right. I can't talk about I it. You know, okay, can I be, I don't know about Canada, but right now um, I, the the States is just starting to open up, right? Mm-hmm. Basically, like it's, it, we're just starting to see um, auditions and, yeah. and scripts come down the pike because I mean, this COVID thing, it like, for crazy, real, yeah, I crazy. think everybody was just trying to figure out and still quite frankly is trying to figure out how to, how to shoot things safely. I mean, yeah, I mean, and they're you know, shutting down productions right now. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. just started. The Chicago Fire just got shut yeah. down. Just got yeah. shut down two days ago. Yeah, I've had yeah. three three auditions since January. That that's wow. yeah, I've that's had it. two. I've had that's two. It. It's crazy. Yeah, wow. but it, I I agree. It is just just starting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Canada is opening up a little bit earlier than the United States for obvious reasons, and uh, Europe as well. I think what people don't realize that it, it's it's way more expensive to be shooting COVID style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's not, you can't do longer day. You can't do long days. Like we used to, we used to do 14, 16 hour days. We can't do that anymore. It has to be like an eight hour day, 10, 10 max. And yeah. like it's just the process of actors in a trailer, getting their makeup and hair done. We can't be four actors at the same time anymore. Cause no, we're not, we can't wear a mask. Right. Yeah, so it's it's really complicated, and I I find it so funny when people that are not in the business asking me, "Well, aren't you working now? <laughs> so when are you guys going Where? back?" I'm like at Timmy's, no social distancing <laughs> our job. Timmy's. We have to touch yeah. each other and talk into people's faces. Well, it's also you know it's that difficult thing of like if if someone tests positive, then you know the whole production is halted for a minimum of two two weeks, not always, but like often. And the other thing is that it's just, it's, it's super risky. People's contracts are like crazy. It's like, if you get it, you grow out. (laughs) It's a strange, strange, strange time. I would say, I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but do you think it's like twice as expensive? Cause I would be thinking it is. Yeah, um, it is my friend is shooting her first feature film she was supposed to start in august and it got pushed she's just starting next week and yeah like it, she had to add like you know four hundred thousand dollars to her budget just to wow. shoot properly wow. yeah yeah well, and that's congratulations to her for the film but yeah thanks. yeah yeah Wow, that's yeah, insane. I was I was convinced that we were going to start seeing a lot of space movies, actors in space suits. Um, I was like, how are we going to shoot? You know, like I was reading the uh, the actra rules, the COVID rules for sets, and they were like, so before every scene, when you have to actually touch another actor, you've got to wash your hands beforehand, do the scene, wash your hands afterwards, and I thought, do they have? any clue how many takes like that could be like i could have washed my hands like 90 times right <laughs> yeah. you know but like it's bananas it's serious like i was i'm trying and trying desperately <laughs> to develop a show and like you know we're talking back and forth with people and they're going okay so you need fewer people in this scene you can't have a scene in like you know i it's an idiot so i'm writing like loads of weird scenes in toilet cubicles and they're just like you can't have that and you know and then it's like can you have a few more scenes outside and you know so we've had to i mean it's useful in some ways but you've had to completely change the, yeah. the geography of the entire thing to make sure that it's like they're always thankfully at a garden party it's really easy you know but (laughs) there's no other way like you're trying to be like how can I convince anyone that this is possibly going to be you know a viable thing when it's like well I can convince you if I can have a group of 10 people mostly six feet apart you know um and that's just like the very early stage of trying to convince people that it would be even something that you could begin to get into production so it's it's the hurdles (laughs) Are real? I'm definitely that, hoping that that kind of levels out for you, because yeah, that yeah. sounds that sounds such a complicated way to try to make things. Um, unfortunately, yeah. we are wrapping up on time, so I want to give you all an opportunity to say uh, one last thing to the fans uh, before we get out of here. Maxim, if we want to start with you, and we'll go kind of around my screen, I'll, I'll shout you guys out. Well, thank you so much for watching and. You know, maybe, yeah, write on Twitter or something. Start a petition so we have a season two. That'd be amazing. I mean, we're ready to go. We're all available. Yes. And we're just shooting in Canada. So why not? 
Listen, don't 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 play it safe. We want season two and an in-between movie. Make it happen. Uh, <laughs> Gabriel, what about you? Um, yeah, I just same as Max. I just want to say thank you to everyone for tuning in and for, you know, all the support for the show. Um, just so pleased to be able to to reach so many people and to and to, you know, touch so many people in, in, in that way and and, and and, you know, have them resonate with with what they're seeing on screen for once and it's and being able to represent that it's uh it's a great feeling so thank you to everyone and yeah we would love to do another season so that would be great i heard that they'd be willing to to you know move the show over to a new to a new home if 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 the attention was there so i think that uh that we should absolutely push for that yes push 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 aurora um, echoing everything that the other guys said, thank you so much for watching. Um, it's been amazing that the show has reached so many people. And yeah, we just are super grateful for the support. Um, keep spreading the word. Great. <laughs> Tamara? Um, well, again, what, what everyone said, I am so, so grateful that um, the fans were so welcoming uh, to us because like this was such a, a dream journey. It was super crazy to shoot and so much fun with this beautiful group. So I'm deeply grateful that I got to have that experience and so deeply grateful that the fans came along for the ride because we definitely felt the love. Um, so I'm so, I'm so grateful and uh, that help, hell yes, season two. Everyone write in, right? Three, in. four, yeah. five. Let's do yes, it. Yes, we'll do yeah. it. JC. Oh my God. Just like everyone else. Thank you guys so much for watching all over the world. I mean, it's crazy to get all these emails and messages and stuff from everywhere, you know, Japan, Korea, you know, Australia, you know, just an on and on and on. I want to encourage all the Americans out there to vote. Please vote. I don't care what your political affiliation is. Vote, vote, vote. Just vote. Yes. November third. Right. Yep. Absolutely yes. valid. Whatever. You know. Anyway. <laughs> don't forget to all the fans watching live or watching later on twitch facebook or youtube check out those pay paid exclusive experiences like one-on-one -on -one private video chats with these guys that's actually going to start uh, october 11th so jump on that right away wizardworldvirtual.com uh join mike g tonight for Wiz uh Wiz quiz it's 50 questions 50 minutes you can win all kinds of crazy great stuff uh, some of the other panels we've got coming up, Rose McGowan uh, from Batman to Joker, Stars of Scary Movies, and Bruce Campbell's Last Fan Standing. Those are coming up over the next couple of days. So tune in to wizworldvirtual.com because this is the place where you want to be. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Victor Dandridge, the hardest working man in comics, with the cast of October Faction. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for joining us. You guys are fantastic. I love each and every one of you. You are my family from now on. So oh, thank you, guys. Thank you Victor. Oh, thank Thanks, you. Victor. Have a great one. Hi, this is Aaron Ashmore, and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe like, like now. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom.